Welcome back to the Diligent Minds Podcast, where I provide practical steps for you to become a better you. I'm your host, Dorian Jones. Let's get into it. What's going on, Diligent Mars community? I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. If you listen to this on the day that it comes out, I would like to welcome all my new listeners. I appreciate you for choosing me out of all the options that you had. You chose to hang out with me for your personal development choice of today. And I really appreciate that. And to all my returning listeners, you know what's going on. Welcome back. I really appreciate every single one of you, especially those who've been with me throughout the whole time of me recording a podcast, seeing me develop and get better. I truly appreciate you to everyone listening to this on Apple Podcasts. Take a second and leave a rating and review. You don't even have to leave the episode in order for you to do that. Go ahead and back out a little bit. Still listen to the episode. Go ahead and leave that rating and review. Let me know how you like the show, what you've gotten from it. And I truly appreciate you if you do that. Don't forget to check out the links down in the show notes where you can send me that text message. The online course is not available anymore because I'm redoing it and I'm adding a lot more value to it. So I'm very excited for what I have to come. So we're going to get right into it. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Today is going to be me interviewing someone, actually, which is something that I want to implement onto the podcast a little more uh, on a regular basis. Today is the first episode of me interviewing someone. So let me know how you like it. Don't forget to shoot me that text message. Send me a message on Instagram, whatever you want to do. Let me know how you like the episode, because I want you guys to get value from it. I want you guys to hear from someone else other than myself so that you can see how they went on their journey and how they developed and grew and just overcame many obstacles that came across their way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode because I did. I enjoyed the conversation that we had and I hope you guys get many lessons from it and understand that it's not where you are, but it's about where you're going. So no further ado, here it is, my conversation with Marquise Wheaton. What's going on, Diligent Minds community? We are here with my man, Marquise Wheaton. We're going to talk to him, learn about his personal development and what he went through in his life to really get to where he is today. And I hope you guys pick up some jewels from this, pick up some uh, inspiration and learn that it doesn't matter where you are. It's all about where you're going. So welcome to Diligent Minds podcast. Marquise, what's going on? Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. First and foremost, I've been following your, your campaign and your movement for a good minute on IG. So, man, it's a blessing to be here. I appreciate you. Man, anytime, anytime. I appreciate you agreeing to do it. Absolutely. So let's, uh, let's go back a little bit. Let me let you start and tell your story about where you started and a little bit to where you are today. Yeah, so um, I mean, the, the the short story, I guess, is uh, I grew up in South Phoenix. I was born in Dallas, grew up in South Phoenix. Um, big football family. We I was heavy on sports, so um, grew up in South Phoenix. Like I said, ended up moving to Mount Point, um, which is a nicer area, right? And I think that's where a lot of my change came from personally because it was a different world. It was almost like a culture shock, um, just going from the hood to that. So. Um, throughout that phase, that's where I started, you know, selling uh, drawings and clothing and snacks. And my, my entrepreneurial hustle started um, in that in that phase, because obviously, uh, you know, we didn't have what everybody else had. And, you know, when you were in high school, that's a big deal at that time. So, yeah, I wanted to get some paper. So that's why I started learning uh, entrepreneurship and, you know, just try, just starting to handle myself as an individual. Um, in terms of business, but I started my business in high school. Um, it was a pretty big, well-known clothing line out here. Was in a bunch of stores nationwide, and uh, from there ended up going to junior college, uh, Phoenix College Junior College, and then from there went to Southern Mississippi to play football. Um, still had the business going. Still was always business minded. From there went and played a year at Tampa Bay um, Buccaneers, which they just won a championship. Shout out Brady. You know what I'm saying? You can't go against uh, Tom Brady, so that's dope. But, um, yeah, uh, after ball, you know, because I feel like I, w- I had that uh, entrepreneurial seed planted at such a young age, that that's always been my dominant thought in terms of uh, being in control of my own time, 
You know what I mean? Being in control of my own money, my own situation. So I kind of always been anti nine to five. <laughs> Yeah. So uh yeah, after ball, I went I had to go get a job. Um, and you know, at that point I was like, all right, let me let me figure something else out because this ain't it. You know, me and you talked a little bit about that before the interview. Like, yeah, this ain't it. So yeah, uh from there transition to starting my graphic design business, which I still have now, which is called Hustle Vision. And you know, Hustle Vision basically allowed me to not have to go and live that nine to five life, not have to, you know, give up my time so much. So um, that's been a huge blessing because I, I I stay home with my daughter, take care of my daughter, homeschool her. So um, I'm just kind of in a phase now where I'm I'm really focused in on helping people in, or individuals and in personal development, you know, getting clarity on who they are um, and living their highest version. Right. I think that's what it comes down to, that continuous chase. So um, I've had a number of programs, um, whether that be, you know, blueprint, life blueprints, whether that be I had a program called On My Shit where it was like a super intensive that just really just shook people up and uh, helped them get clarity on where they wanted to go. And um, I'm working on my next one now, my next group coaching program. So that's a little bit about me in a nutshell. Okay. Okay. So let's go back a little bit. Let's rewind it. So you yeah. moved from uh, Phoenix or South, was it South Phoenix to no, Mount Point? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah. I moved from South Phoenix to Mount Point. Mm -hmm. Okay. About what age was that? That was high school. High school. Okay. So, what were some of the biggest changes that you did notice? I know you said it was a culture shock to you. What were some of the things that you did see? Um, I think the biggest thing for me was the, the change in vibe, I guess. You know, mm -hmm. coming from South Phoenix, I was, it was a little more tense. It's a little more, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You, you kind of got a more inner got city type of vibe. About you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to attack something before it attack you type of mentality. Like it's, it's weird. But um, when I got a Mount Point, it was, it was just go with the flow smooth. You know what I mean? Like people was just, they cared about other things. They didn't care about the stuff, you know, I, I came from caring about. So I guess just, you know, clothing and, and nice cars, the, the kids drove nice cars and the teachers yeah. talk to you differently. And, you know, it's yeah. just a whole atmosphere change. Yeah, now I get that because I had a similar thing uh, playing basketball going to from the east side to the west side, even though some people still call it the school that I went to kind of ghetto and hood. I didn't look at it like that because it was a different dynamic coming from where I came from, from the east side, which was Watts and like in the Compton area and stuff. It was just like a different edge that the people have just going that 10, 12 mile radius. It was yeah. so I get it with that culture shock. Yeah, man, I feel it. So what uh, what type of clothes were you selling? Uh, well, I started off, bro. So it's a funny story. Uh, me and my brother, me and my brother used to share like four pair of pants, mm -hmm. like literally shared. And we had two shoes. We would swap back and forth. And I remember uh, I had saw one of the, the guys draw on his jeans, draw some mm -hmm. characters with the puffy paint. Right. And I'm like, man, I, I used to draw. I'm drawing Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z, all that. I'm super artistic. So I'm like, y'all could do that. So I found out where the paint was and, you know, I lined my jeans up the next night and my bro was like, man, we only got four pair of pants. Like, what you doing? I'm like, nah, nah, it's going to be dope. I'm selling them. We could do this and da, da, da. So it ended up working out. Like I drew on them, drew some cartoon characters. The dude the next day was like, yo, I, I, I'll give you $20 for those. No, he said, I'll give you 40. Mm -hmm. you no, know, this is the area we in. The high school kid, like, I'll give you 40 for them. I'm like, yeah, get out of here. Next yeah. day he bought the money and I didn't bring the jeans. And from that point, I was like, oh boy, I can make money. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Just because it was tangible. He had it. He's like, yo, he expecting it. Like, where's that? So at that point, boom, I just started drawing on jeans. People give me their jeans. You know, I want this character and they have it printed out on papers and mm -hmm. I just cook it up. And then um, right. later in high school, that's when I started the actual brand. It was called Eloquent Club. Um, okay. E-Club for short. Yeah. And that, that, is what I started, you know, just really going in in terms of uh, taking things that was happening in the culture and putting it on shirts and um, in this unique way. So um, that's okay. the brand that started, you know, getting in stores and whatnot that kind of popped everything off. OK. And during that time, what were some of the lessons that you did learn? What some things that you really took away from from that point in your life? Um, looking back, the biggest thing was the most valuable thing I would say was just living in my own world and not so much listening to outsiders. Mm -hmm. 
I think that yeah. was the biggest lesson. Like I, I wouldn't have known that then, but when I look back now, I'm like, oh man, so many other people could have done what I had done or found a passion or um, just been more aggressive with who they were. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you know, I just took chances. I just took chances and I didn't care about, you know, just for example, my brother saying, you know, we got three, four fans. I'm not worried about that. I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, I saw this. I know I could do this. Let's go. Right? Yeah, you start Same with that thing. vision. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, just early on, early on, that was one of the natural gifts I already had. Just kind of living in my own world, um, being able to observe what's going on, calculate what I wanted and make my decision and just go. Right? Yeah. So that, that, that lesson and then obviously just dealing with people, you know, sales, dealing with uh, customers and money and mm -hmm. product and production and all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah. So just having people to buy into your vision. I learned that pretty, mm -hmm. pretty early on as well. Yeah. 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 And then that, that's a big thing that uh, when you live inside your own head and then you also got outside factors that can contribute to that. And especially when they don't understand and visualize it, because like you said, you have a vision, you know what you want to do. You could have listened to your brother when he said, man, we only got this many uh, pair of pants. You need to hold back and not do that. But you continued on because you had a vision and so many people don't do that. We fail to to really follow through with ourselves because we let the outside voices come in and dictate how we're going to go about our future, what moves we're going to make next. Right. So that was a big thing that you could take away that you saw, like, you know what? I believe in this. Let me continue pushing because this is something that I see. You may not see it now, but you're going to see it later. Yeah, absolutely. And, and another thing, my parents, man, just um, because mm -hmm. in eighth grade, when I was, you know, leaving the hood and going to uh, Awatuki, which is Mount Point, um, a group of people, from my same area came with us, right? Mm -hmm. It was a group of us that came because I, I think that's when they opened the borders up or I, I don't know how that worked, but it was a group of us that came. And after that first second of semester, they was like, yo, this is too different. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like I'm used, I, I'm finna go back home. And my whole perspective was now, we know what's back home. Like my whole family's mm -hmm. still back. Like I, I understand what's still there, but this is all new. Like every right. day is new. These people talk different and to me, it was it was more excitement of um, I know who I am back home. Can I re um, recreate myself for this new situation? You know what I'm saying? And again, that's me looking back now. At the time, I'm not knowing that. At the time, it's just more like, okay, this is different. Like I look forward to um, the next day. I look forward to practice. I look forward to going to different functions and being in neighborhoods that I'm not used to. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, yeah, I salute my parents on. for that. Just making that switch because if you would have spoke to me then, we, you know, that's a whole different person. Like I'm sure you, you know, if I would have met you yeah. earlier on, it'd be like what? Like, so to right. think that you know we we can connect here and talk about personal development and, and leveling up as a mm -hmm. whole, I would have never thought I'd be on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so. yeah, man, I get it. And then so you say you play football as well. How long were you playing football? Did you play from? You know, when you were little or pick up in high school, how was that? Yeah, so uh, my, my favorite team is the Cowboys. So oh, because, man, I feel yeah. sorry for you, man. Uh, you, man. <laughs> and we got rings, though. We, we got a couple of rings. Yeah. Nah, but, I'm, uh, switch. I'm not even a big football fan, man. I'm, yeah. I watch it, but I pick on everybody. There you go. There you go. You got to get your jabs in. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I grew up. Uh, so early on in Dallas, um, I grew up in that. Deion Sanders and Troy Aikman and Emmitt Smith. And like, this is, it was a big, you know, error in that time. And my cousin actually got drafted from Oregon to the Cowboys. So um, we was just around it a lot. You know what I mean? I was just around football a lot um, at a young age. We played some of our Pop Warner games on the Cowboys field, like actual field. We have halftime games and all kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I grew up into. And then when we moved out here to Arizona, um, yeah, we was, I was just, I think, I think the level of competition in, in Dallas was a lot higher because mm -hmm. when we moved to Arizona, like we was superstars, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. we got to meet a lot of people, you get popular, you know how that go, just mentally mm -hmm. it starts to help you. So, um, and then, like I said, we already had a football family. So I'm used to, you know, summers being in camps and, all that good stuff, weights. It's just a constant ongoing, no off season, always doing something. Our parents always had us in something, track. So you was year round doing track and all that good stuff and then going yep. playing, going, yep. I get it, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you played all years in high school. 
Yep. Yeah, high school. And then how did it go with making a transition from going from high school to to uh, junior college? Was that a decision that you made instantly? Were you like, no, I'm for sure going? Or are you like, you know what, I'm going to figure it out? Or what were you thinking but at that time? I fucked up in high school. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know because, but I, I messed up big time <laughs> in high school. Uh-huh. I, uh, I hate school. I hate school. Let me say this. I hate learning things that I don't think I need to know. If I don't have no interest in learning it, then I, I, I'm yeah. just so I don't know. I'm just ninety so percent of the school system. Yeah, I'm like, bro, this is not for me. So, uh, I was one of those kids that was doing great on a football field in camps, ranked high, and then you know the coaches would be like, you gotta get your grades up. You know, I'm like, man, coaches are coming to visit. I'm doing all right. I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out. <sighs> okay, it came to bite me in the ass, right? All my mm-hmm. my offers went away. Um, so I had to go to junior college route. And I think that was a vital transition for me because it, it kind of kicked me in the butt. And I used to be a know-it-all, you know, especially just having the success I was having, especially in sports and business and, you know, even girls at that age. Right. So just little stuff like that. But I felt like a know-it-all. And uh, at that time, it really bit me in the butt because I felt like I had let everybody down, let my family down. I let myself down, most importantly. So my whole two years at junior college, I was just locked in. I wasn't going to no parties. I wasn't, you know, messing off. I was just locked in grades, school, football. And, you know, yeah, just had to lock you in. You learn to take it more serious. You're like, all right, you Very know, it's serious. really not a game. Very serious. Yeah. Like, it was a full, okay. full transition. Yeah. So you did the full two years and then you got recruited mm-hmm. to go to uh, college. So, you got a scholarship. Yep. Okay, so what was that like when you got there? Uh, that was amazing. I um took a few visits, but I felt like Southern Miss was so different. It, it kind of Mississippi kind of reminded me of Dallas, just in terms of it being the South and being slower. So mm-hmm. I think that's what made me want to go there. And then um, it was just me and my wife now. So she mm-hmm. came down there with me, and even through that that experience, I was the same way I was in uh, junior college. I was just locked in. All right, so I'm playing ball. Um, the team is doing well. We ended up winning the championship. I'm starting, um, but I wasn't really hanging out with the players as much. I'll just go to practice, go to school, come home. And when I would come home, I had started learning, like teaching myself hacking, right? How to hack programs, how to design, how to, and that's kind of what, what got me into graphic design now, because in college, I was putting in all that time in terms of learning, taking courses, designing for my brand. Because um, when I was in college, I would leave college, like, say, for the weekend, I would leave, fly to Phoenix uh, for a fashion show, go crazy in the fashion show, shut it down, fly back. You know what I'm saying? So I was doing that a lot in in college. So I was still running my business, and I was still playing football. I just kind of had, like, a a more mature mentality in um, college than most people are used to, you know? So just, just building with my wife and building my business and learning. That's kind of all I was on. Yeah. Okay. We want to take it back. A, well, not back too far, but when you was playing football, you always had the intentions of making it to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Was that always the uh, major goal? Okay. So as you got into the junior college and then you transferred, did you think, okay, this is still, I need to make it Were you just like determined to get there. Do you think that's why you were uh, so locked in on your schooling and making sure that you did everything right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. absolutely okay. um my, my dream has always been to make it to the nfl because like i said that's what we grew up in that's what i saw that's what i saw my cousins doing just a big football family in general so um yeah but the whole time i'm focused on football and on this you know progressive journey business is growing you know what i mean like my business men- mentality is growing all the way from high school junior college during college I, by junior college i probably had 10 cars because mm-hmm. I was I was selling cars, flipping cars, I'd buy a car, you know, um, mm-hmm. repair it, bam, get it off. I was doing that, you know, fresh out of high school. So yeah. I was already like on this hustle, but I was still focused on football. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And I think it just got to the point where uh, me personally, once I got to the NFL, it was like and I got released. I got called back. And then once I think when I got called back, I got released again. I was like, yo, I don't think I want to be on this train, on this journey, mm-hmm. because that go against everything that business and entrepreneurship had taught me in terms of not being in control. Like, I don't want to ever not be in control of my situation 
or up right. in control of my time. Right. And yeah. I feel like football, man, they they release you. They call you right back. I remember throwing all my clothes, whites in the color, whites with the colored in the washing machine to hurry up to make mm-hmm. the flight back to Tampa. You know what I mean? And I got I got my girl and I got my own situation. It's like, bro, they can just make a call and you got to drop everything in if you want that opportunity. Right. And I wanted that opportunity, but it was like, mm, for what I got to give up to get it, it's this probably not going to be it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Okay. It's probably not going. And I know I had already had peers that were on that journey, you know, mm-hmm. trying out for teams, getting released, trying out, going to this camp, going to Canada, just traveling and traveling. And that's all fine and dandy if that's your your passion. But I always look at it like, bro, in that three, four years, you could have built something that was your own. Mm-hmm. You know, you could have just laid a, a solid foundation of something that you were into. And right. you can call that your own. It's not a lot, but it's yours. You know what I mean? So right. that's kind of how I looked at it. Yeah, because a lot of people don't realize when you're playing football, you got how many men is it on the team, on the roster? Uh, oh, on the roster? Yeah. Uh, how many in high school? But in college, it's 53. I mean, uh, NFL is 53. 53. So you think about that. Not everybody's going to be a star. Not everybody's going to be the person that that's going to get the multi-million dollar a big contract. So the, that last man on the bench, you know, it's probably like you said, it may be even more profitable for them to go out and do their own thing. If it's just not working out, you being a journeyman, you going from one place to another, they feel like, OK, this person disposable, let's get rid of them. We don't need them anymore. Mm-hmm. So I feel what you're saying when you're saying you're on that whole train, you just like, OK, cool. We on the up right now. We going good. Boom. All right. We don't need you anymore. You go back down. Like, all right, now, where do I go from here? Yeah. So that's where you were at with it. Yeah. And I think um, when I would already observe that with other people Mm -hmm. that my peers that were older than me going through that process, I was already Mm -hmm. calculating what I would do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, you've been doing this, but what you got to show for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. At the end of the day, once it's all said and done, you done ran your laps, you done tried the teams, you done with ball, bam, now you got to go to nine to five. And technically, you're starting all the way over. You haven't had right. no time to yourself to learn, to build, to grow. You've just been giving yourself to that. And ain't nothing wrong with it if that's your passion. Like, you know, if that's your passion, whatever your passion is, go for it. But I think it's uh, wise to consistently check in. And that's another thing that I was doing that I wasn't aware of then was I consistently checked in with myself on what my target was, mm-hmm. like what I cared for the most, right? And I remember it had got to a point to where it was like, I care about business more than this. Right. Like, this is fun. I've been doing this my whole life, but, you know, I care a little bit more about business and just uh, being my own boss, I guess. Right. Okay. So when you first got there, you already, when did you kind of get in your mind? Was it when you first got there that you didn't want to do it long term or did you have intentions on doing it long term or was it just that transition and learning the business behind football and learning how it really worked that made um, you decide it, you know what i need to think of something bigger than this that's a good question it was when i got released mm-hmm. like when i kept getting released because i had already seen myself going down that same path that all my peers had went through okay like before so my head was like, oh i'm gonna join the team and i'm gonna be on the team and it's you know i'm gonna play football mm-hmm. for but then it was like, all right, you release. Then it's like, you got called back. Then it's like, you release. And I was like, all right, I'm not doing that. Yeah, and my okay. agent's like, you know, we got this set up in Canada. Mm-mm. Like, we got this set up. Mm-mm. Like, okay. it's wraps. I'm, I'm done so, with that. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, you decided to just go out and do your own thing. What was that transition like? And how did that look? Let's uh, paint a clear picture, making that transition from, all right, I don't want to pursue the NFL anymore. I want to go on to this. What was going on uh, around that time? Um, I think that's a great question, too. Around that time, it was more so trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Because mm-hmm. at, by this time, I had dissolved the brand, maybe like a year before I had dissolved the brand. So I didn't have any stable business of my own, mm-hmm. right? But I know I didn't want to run that, be on that treadmill of all. So I ended up getting a, uh, a job. A nine to five job. And I think that was another uh, uh, that was another shocker for me because I hadn't necessarily been in a job. I don't know if I even had a job since then, but I remember being there. And I was thinking like this is school all over again. Mm-hmm. You know, the cubicles and a job and the, you got to be on the phone for X amount of time and you can't be in the queue and your breaks is 50. I'm like, man, this is uh. so um, on, on my breaks, I would 
just be mapping out what I can do, what I was good at and what services I could provide. Because I remember in high school, I remember that feeling of, you know, initially finding something like, oh, I'm good at this and somebody wants to buy it. And them, mm-hmm. you know, having that transaction of value felt so amazing because it was like, I just made money out of thin air and I like doing this. So I was trying to get back into that lane. So uh, yeah, during breaks, I wouldn't talk to nobody. I wouldn't get comfortable with people. Um, I wouldn't, I just, my cameraman now, my, my, my boy Tess, he's actually, um, he's actually a, uh, uh, in production now, but he, uh, or director, I'm sorry. But I had met him there. He was probably the only guy I spoke with. And I would just build with him. Like, we'd take breaks, build. i get off of work. i grab a coffee on the way home. And i go in my office and i lock my door. Okay. And i just work the whole night. And then come out the office, go to bed, wake up the next day, go to the 9 to 5, get off, do the same thing. So I was working more and had my attention more so on how can I get out of here. And I didn't want myself to get comfortable. Yeah. So I kind of, that's where I was like, you know, I already did designs and stuff for the brand. Let me start doing designs for other people. Mm-hmm. Right. And that yeah. was the process. That was the yeah. process that, you know, I and was I, able and, to. Oh, I'm going to listen my back. No, nah, no, nah, I was just saying that was the process that, that kind of got me out of the nine to five. Okay. Yeah. And it's crazy you say that because I talk about that sometimes. I tell people never go to a nine to five that you don't want to be at. And give them your all and then you go home on e and you don't have anything left in the tank for yourself because mm-hmm. that time that after you get off from that job you know you got dry time you got to eat you got to take care of responsibilities but that two three four hours that you do have where you just lollygagging what are you doing to help yourself and that's what you really want to focus on that time management especially if you're looking to create something different than what you have at the moment because what you have at the moment can really consume you it can absorb you could drain your energy drain your time your finances all that stuff and really get you comfortable you get into a comfortable lifestyle you start to make a certain amount of money and you just forget about your dreams you forget about why you started what did you want to do and i man i get it man i understand yeah you you hit it on the head and that's one thing i did i just checked in with myself like even when i got to the job i just saw how comfortable people were and mm-hmm. it's cool to be comfortable and you love the job but to be complaining and still be comfortable. That's why I was like, that don't mix for me. You know, if I'm complaining, if I don't like something, you're going to see it in my face. You're going to like, it's just, I can't hold it back. <laughs> I'm going right. to put in work to change that situation. And and only I'm able to do that. Only I'm capable to do that. I'm not going to wait around for nobody to do it for me. So, you know, I just remember being in the, in the, in the, uh, the cubicles, like, man, I could be home doing this or I could be, you know, it's just like, I'm watching the time go by and it's like, man, I got to find, I, I, I would say, I would say to people watching this, always focus on like what the most important thing is to you in that moment. Like don't even think too far down the road, just right now, what would I rather have? And let that have your attention because the only reason I actually got the job was yeah, to make money, but two was more so to gain the skill of selling. You know, it was okay. a sales job. So I wanted to sharpen my sales skills because I know whatever I created after that, I'm just rolling the sales skills over to that, to my business, mm-hmm. yeah. right? The same thing I did with football, the commitment, focus, doing your job, consistency, all that stuff that we learned in ball, we rolled it in. You can roll it into other areas of life. So mm-hmm. that's one advantage that athletes have that, you know, a lot of people don't have. And I encourage people to use that. Because those are val- valuable skills that, you know, maybe a lot of people who, who aren't athletes don't get to, uh, you know, sharpen as as quickly. Mm-hmm. OK, I got you. So so from there, you decide when did you decide? All right, cool. I'm going to take the jump. I could do this on my own. You was uh, how long were you at the job and and what was your transition like leaving from the job? Uh, I was probably at the job for maybe six months, eight months, maybe. If that, uh, and then the transition was, so my brother's a uh, 15 months younger than me. And when I stopped playing football at Tampa, he had got drafted third round to the Steelers. Right. And I had ended up making a connection through his agency. And those were literally my first gigs. Cause he had got his logo designed. And he had sent it to me like, Hey, check it out. Da, da, da. I'm looking like, bro, I can make something better than that. 
He's like, yeah, send it to me. So I cook up a logo, send it to him, send it to his agency. He's like, hey, they're going to call you. So the agency called me like, hey, how would you like to, we like what you did. Um, how would you like to, you know, take on some, some more of our, our clients, right? In terms of their brand packages, these different athletes. So that's what got me into the door in terms of, uh, you know, just graphic designing and being able to make a substantial amount outside of work. So um, I want to say my last day of work, it, it was something petty. I remember the, the the boss coming and he slid my stuff over on the desk. So disrespectful, slid all my stuff over and he sat down on my desk. And that's another thing. The, the atmosphere in jobs is insane, but that's a whole nother story. But he slid my stuff over and, and uh, he started talking to me about something. And I had to stop everything he was saying. Like, look, I respect you. I appreciate you for this opportunity. But that that you did right there was disrespectful. Like, that was so disrespectful to me, my man. Like, you, this is my desk and you just sat your ass on it. And, you know, I understand you the, you the lead man. And you know how it is in jobs. Like, the manager, you know, when they walk, everybody kind of straighten up and I had missed all that because I'm not used to the nine to five. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm on pure respect. Young, old is respect. I respect you, you respect me. So, right. That was my right. struggle. I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. I told no, him it's my last day. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, it's my last day. I'm out of here. Yeah. And then I remember I did the same thing. I left the job, went straight to the same gas station I had been going to, got my coffee, <laughs> back to my office, and locked in. Mm. And that was okay. that. So do you think if your brother didn't get drafted to the Steelers and his agency uh, wanted to work with you, what was your plan if that didn't happen? Or did that just fall in your lap? Or how was that? Well, the, the my uh, I think that just accelerated it. Okay. I think that just accelerated it. Uh, um, I was already picking up clients. I was already, uh, honestly, I might have been to the point to where I could have left. But I was just more so picking up clients. Um, still learning the graphic design business like I had that was the new business to me like I know how to design but it's different when you design it for people and having that open communication and you know taking deposit all that good stuff so yeah I think that just accelerated it okay and you were working with local clients or you were working with people around the country around the world how were you uh getting these clients when you uh first started or when you were still working your job so a lot of my clients came off of the back of the clothing brand that I had that was already successful so the clothing brand, I was already moving throughout the city. A lot of the people I know now, like you had mentioned, uh, your barber, like I know everybody in the city, but it came from that phase. It came from them few years, maybe 08 to 2011, maybe like those few years. I was at events. I was at clubs. I was networking. I was doing fashion shows. I was just grinding, doing all these different things. So I was meeting all these people you know, through the brand. And then uh, once the brand wasn't there no more, I was able to, all right, here's the graphic design. And now those same people, I was able to to build with them. So it's like a group of people that I networked with at a young age and we all came up together. Now those same people own stores in the malls and um, own their own barbershops. Like they have their own establishments mm -hmm. and they still come through my business for it. So, okay, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you looking like today? What is your business look like today? What is your mission? Your like the things that you learn up to this point right now, what have that lined you up to do from this point on? I think through, through my graphic design business, that's what got me into the personal development and helping people there because um, along this whole entire journey, people were still calling me, you know, saying, Hey, let me run this by you. Hey, let me see what you think of this. You know, and that's what kind of get got me thinking, like, all right, if I wrote down my perfect day, what would that look like? And I enjoy those conversations the most, like these conversations that we have or, you know, helping somebody overcome an obstacle or break a mental barrier. Like that excited me the most because um, when they get off the phone with you, they people are charged up. Right. And I think that's what, you know, I started looking at personal development. And I was like, man, I want to focus more on this. I want to focus on helping at a higher level. Like I'm helping on the design level and I'm helping on, a, you know, helping people start their business. But I want to help them mentally. Right. Because you can't no matter where you are mentally, you can't put um, sales techniques and strategies and all this other stuff that people 
you know, get obsessed with, it's like it come back to you where you are mentally, right? If you got mental barriers, yeah. if you got mental blocks, if you got shit you holding on to, if you got trauma, if you don't know how to view yourself in the right light, I don't care what you try to do. It's not going to cook up. It's not going to work. You understand? Right. So uh, I think the main thing was just uh, the graphic design helped me not have to worry about money. That freed me up to say, all right, how can I help at a bigger level? That got me to personal development. Okay, so that's where you got into it. And then what is your, how do you plan on helping these people? I know you say you got, you're doing um, different things with coaching. What else are you doing to help people with personal development? Yeah, so I do one-on-one coaching. And one-on-one coaching is mainly around breaking mental barriers. So um, the easiest way I can say it is what I do is I, when I speak to somebody, I speak to them in the highest version of themselves, right? Based on where they're trying to go, I find out where they're trying to go. And then I go there now and I hold that space for them, right? So if I'm able to go there now of, you know, you living your ideal life or you um, taking diligent minds to the to the level that you see it at, and I can speak to you from that standpoint and hold that space over a good amount of time, that'll help you, um, you know, take the right actions, take, take everything. It'll help you align everything to that. Right. Okay. So that's what I do on a, on a group coaching. Now, what I'm doing now mainly is uh, putting together different programs to uh, help people align with where they're trying to go. That's that's the, the gist of it. All right. So okay. I think the biggest thing is, again, living in your own world, right? Mm-hmm. Creating your own world and living in that. And when you when you get clear on what you want and you clear on your own world and you clear on who you are and you can live in that world, you don't care about, you know, nothing else outside there is no barriers like the barrier is you right so that's that's kind of what i focus on right now okay okay i got a few questions written down i want to ask absolutely so we got it's like coming up to the last part of the interview or the conversation i should say that we haven't if they made a movie about your life what would the title be that best describes it movie or book either one Higher. Higher. Okay. Why you choose that? Because I feel like every stage of my, every stage of my life, I never let, I didn't let myself, well, I have portions where I let myself down, but as a whole, each stage, I elevated. Okay. I personally elevated. Okay. And what's one word that best describes you? Mm. Authentic. Okay. Okay got you and then what's the interesting fact that not most people know about you like maybe some family members know or maybe they don't even know uh that's a good question uh, or let's let's say this what's one of the things that you shocked yourself with like you're like oh man i didn't know i could you know i'm really here like i'm really doing this i'm really doing that what's some things that you learned about yourself you like all right damn i didn't know i had that in me the personal development Mm-hmm. Okay. Helping people at that at that level because some of the some of my clients I, I've helped shift dramatically. And and mm-hmm. some of them have known me at a young age. So like I said, the difference between where I was and where I am now. Yeah. It was like I, I wouldn't have thought you went that route. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So and, and, and I do it so naturally and I'm good at it and I enjoy it. And that's what shocks me. It's like, damn, you really enjoy that? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, coming from playing football and doing all this other stuff, it's like, hey, you really enjoy that? It's like, sh- yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. What about three brains that you would like to pick, dead or alive? You could just sit there, have lunch, or have a meeting with these people. Well, who's three people you'll choose and why? I would choose. Um... I would choose Nipsey, Nipsey Hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I resonate a lot with everything about you know his his upbringing, um, and again, just elevating yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Looking at yourself and saying, "I can do better. I can go to a higher level," right? So definitely Nip. Uh, another person would be, I would say, my grandpa. Uh, my Papa Joe, uh, he died when I was younger. He's actually the reason we moved down here. Um, that was like, well, I was in third grade. So 
Yeah, when he passed, that's what we moved down here from Dallas. But um, he was, you know, a well-known individual in the city, um, got money, you know, helped a lot of people, different things of that nature. So that's one person I would definitely love to pick his brain. And then another one would probably be uh, – Hmm. I don't know, man. It's hard to. I would say like an older figure, like a like a. You got three. You got two already. You got Nip. I would say Grandpa. I would say somebody like Ali. Okay. Like Muhammad Ali. You know, I, I would really want to talk to people who went through it okay. because it ain't it ain't nothing like going through that adversity and coming out and being able to give game from that standpoint. So it's it's hard for me to narrow that down. It's so many people who done amazing things and went through adversity at a high level. So, yeah. OK. Yeah, okay. That's, that's tough. All right. Last question. What's something that you'd like to tell the listeners that you want them to take away from our conversation? Mm, great question. I would say, uh, trust yourself, trust yourself, take some time. Um, I always talk about high tide and low tide. Right. And I think being in the society we in, we always think we got to go, go, go. We always got to be taking action. We always, and that's not, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta take a step back. You gotta breathe. You gotta, give yourself that peace, right? Uh, or reach for that peace, let me say that, and give yourself the space to allow you to create from that point, right? So I would say uh, trust yourself and and understand your tides, understand your seasons. High tide, that means you, 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 you wanna, you motivate it, you wanna take action, you wanna get shit done, you feel it, right? You are energetically charged up and then low tide, meditate, journal, read, uh, reflect, right? So understand, understand yourself, understand what tied you in and then trust yourself from that standpoint. Okay. Okay, man. Well, I appreciate you for taking out the time to have this conversation with me and everyone listening, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Marquise, uh, what is it? Marquise underscore the great. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Marquise the great. And, uh, yeah, email me, whatever it is, however you want to get in touch with me. I'm around. I'm around. Okay, well, we'll, go, we'll definitely go Absolutely. ahead and put some links in the show notes so that people could check you out. Whether they listen to this on the day that it comes out, whether they listen to this years from later, they will be able to link back with you and just see your progression that you've made. And uh, I'm proud of you. Man, I want to continue to see you grow and build your business to the way you want to do it. And man, you know, we right there doing the same thing. So we'll definitely be crossing paths uh, many times. Yeah, sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. You already know, man. Just sooner than later, man. <laughs> man, this, man, I appreciate you. So we, definitely. We're going to cook. We're going to cook. <laughs> yeah. All right, then you go ahead and enjoy your day. And uh, we will I talk. I appreciate you. Thank you again. All right, anytime. All right, peace.